Hi, this is Adam from EnglishAcorn.com and this is a quick video just demonstrating my latest premium CapX file which is a Construct 2 file which I charge about £1.50 the cost of a cup, a cup of tea or coffee over here in the UK um, and it provides several different examples of how you can use the side scrolling tiled background object to create animation in your game. Now both the obviously the eventually programming and the artwork is included um, in the game um, in the capex so you can actually export the artwork if you'd like to use it in your own projects even for commercial use um, so let's look at the examples that are contained within here so if I just run the layout um, so there are four main examples and they all use the tile background object to create animation or a certain effect which you can use in your games um, there's one which uses one direction left or right basically the x coordinates there's one that uses the X and Y so it creates two directions or four directions technically and there are two examples which use layered blends to create animation or movement let's first look at the one direction the most simplest um, example this is basically an example where you'd have a player running along um, and he may go back and forth at different speeds and you'd have enemies come into this now each of these um, tiled backgrounds move their own accord um, you can increase and decrease the speed. Uh, sorry, I've just lost my place. I just had to pause the video because somebody made a noise outside and I've just lost where I am, which is why you may have seen the, the um, video jump around a bit. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, yeah, e these are all different um, images which you can use in your own game. Uh, this example, you'd have perhaps somebody in the center um, of the screen and he may be met by enemies coming from the left and the right. And then once those enemies leave the screen, they're deleted. Um, each of these examples, which is what I was saying, uh, are on a 640 by 480 screen. So th this, this isn't parallax, this isn't a long layout, this is just a small layout. Um, and in this example, you can simply speed up and decrease the um, effect of the scrolling. Um, okay, the next example is very similar to that one, except you can go up and down as well. So you're in a plane, and this creates the effect of flying around. So you can imagine games whereby you need to defend your plane from enemy ships or attack other ships um, and you could therefore have it in a limited play space for this whereas if you were to use actual geometry within a layout you'll find that you'll have edges um, that, you'll, that you'll come across um, or limited space. In this example I've also got a particle effect which is related to the angle of the ship and um, which is the direction in which it gives the particle effect and the clouds they move um, according to the angle of the ship which you'll see in the event sheet. Now the other two examples, one is the laser and as I said before this uses a blended effect to create this animation here. Normally if you were to use a sprite to create this wiggle wobble line animation it will, you would require quite a lot um, of Im you know, quite a few images to actually create a smooth animation but in this case I'm actually using one um, shapes I should say tile background which is the squiggly line and then I'm using that as a mask for the for another tile background which is the rainbow color and as a result I've, it creates nice animation effect which you can use not just as a laser but you may have a waterfall which you'd like to wiggle and you may want to blend so this example shows you how to do that sort of thing and in the final example it, it also uses a layered blend to create this nice vortex either out or in um, and we'll look at this to see how I've achieved this in a second. So that's basically what, what this CapEx contains. It contains those four examples, the workings, the event sheets of uh, logic to create that, as well as the images which you can use in your own game if you buy this. Um, so let's look at what's contained within here. I've tried to make this as easy as possible to follow, so I've ordered all of my layouts, event sheets and objects into categories to try and make sense. So the layouts are in order, so you've got the first, which is the introduction, which is this one here with my logo, which you can obviously change. Um, each of these layouts actually transition with a, a fade transition to a black screen in a way. If, I'm not sure if you noticed that. Um, unfortunately, in Construct 2, buttons, um, which are these, they don't have an opacity setting and you can't cover them with a layer. Uh, so they show up despite the fade uh, the fade transition but you can replace them with other things um, so uh, yeah 
Most of these event sheets I've included the fade event sheet and the back button event sheets um, to get them to work. On top of that I've placed all the appropriate objects within their own subcategory so they're easier to find. Just be aware that there are four families, one related to the one direction event sheet, um, one related to the two direction and two, these two related to the with blends um, layout and event sheet. So let's look at the uh, this one, let's look at the introduction event sheet. It's quite simple. It, uh, these event sheets are quite straightforward. Um, basically after five seconds a function is crawled which is the fade effect function and if we look in the fade um, event sheet we can see a function called function fade effect and what this does is it looks at two parameters either zero or one if the function is zero then it fades in by activating or deactivating two different groups the fading group every 0.1 second it decreases the layer opacity or alternatively every one sec uh, 0 0.01 second it increases it and then it checks for a condition now you can actually change that time period to something else if you want um, which I had originally but I changed it to that um, and then fade out once the condition is met it calls a function which is the next layer function which takes a parameter um, which, sorry, which sets the parameter which is the next layer as well and it goes to the next layer the when you call the function fade effect you also set this next layout global variable to the name of the um, layout sheet that you want to go to so this enables you to therefore uh, create a bus in which you can go to any layout sheet you want um, so let's look at the menu um, event sheet so this is quite simple basically this is just navigation uh, when you click any of these buttons here um, then the fade effect function is called the parameter first parameter one tells it to fade out and the second one tells um, the program which layout you want to go to and then you go to that layout so let's look at the next layout which is the one direction layout so this is comprised of several different um, tiled um, backgrounds All, most of these are have a width of 256 some of them have varying height um, and these are positioned on screen at certain height then once the um, layout is started they're positioned and the widths are set to the appropriate width they're also included in a group the tiled um, backgrounds oops I put the GB there but they're, they're set in the family and then the compute uh, then the construct two acts upon that family so you have scrolling to every tick they move at a direction which is related to one of their variables which is speed so you'll notice the object in the foreground moves up a faster speed than the object in the background and that creates the depth perception when you um, play th when you watch the layout the example um, they have conditions which resets their position and also this layout has controls so when either the buttons are clicked or keyboard keys are pressed so when these are pre um, clicked or keyboard keys are pressed then either um, I increase what's known as a global variable speed multiplier or decrease it which re relates to how far st um, these move okay so in the ne next example which is the two um, direction example so two direction and two direction this is very similar to before except there's a particle effect here relating to the angle of the plane on top of that um, the um, tiles move depending on the planes angle so the controls change the planes angle by increasing or decreasing it the keyboard keys increase it quicker so they set their angle at a slightly different rate than the buttons do and then both the jet and the um, clouds uh, move relating move in a direction relating to the angle of this plane which creates the nice effect of flying through the clouds. It's very simple, uh, nothing too taxing with that. The next example, this this is where it starts to get a bit more complicated because I actually have a layer blend here and at first glance you can't see the layer blend and what's going on. There are in fact eight, um, apart from the buttons, there are in fact eight different objects. There's this tile background object and then there's this other object which is used as a mask 
with this and the way you use that as a mask is that you include both of them on one layer um, and if we look at the Z order um, you'll find that one is above the other the rainbow one is above the mask the, the associated yellow mask and the rainbow object which is the tile background has a blend mode of a top and by doing that sort a top it enables the yellow object to be used as a mask and then what the program is doing, constructor is doing, it's basically moving the image down and then resetting its position making sure that it's large enough so it's moving it down resetting its position and creating a nice continuous uh, movement with that either in towards the center or out towards the center now each of these um, objects you'll notice they have an, a different angle oops it's really easy to click on them they have a different angle so this one's pointing down this one's pointing to the right this one's pointing up and this one's pointing to left and they move at that angle which is how they have that um, effect moving either in towards the center or away from the center um, and the event sheet logic which goes along with this basically is associated with that moving them either into the center or away from the center and then resetting the size of the tiled um, backgrounds. If, you, if you're if you not sure what I mean when I talk about scrolling tiled backgrounds please watch an earlier video I did where I showed how, which I explained and showed how to create this sort of effect. So this is, this is fairly uh, well explained this so I've annotated and put comments in um, this uses a global variable called rainbow direction if it's one then it's moving away from the center if it's minus one it's moving into the center so that the controls I use simply toggle whether or not that that global variable is minus one or one um, it's very self self-explanatory once you read the notes uh, so let's look at the final event sheet which is the laser event sheet this is a bit more complicated uh, if I just show you the example again so once you once you click on the page um, you have the opacity of an ob this object here this muzzle flare this object here this circle and two more objects which form this wiggly line their opacity is increased um, the line is increased straight away whereas the other one it's increased gradually um, and you have this sort of animation effect going on but this is not an animation it's in fact a tile background object uh, which is moving along it's actually um, constantly looking towards this having its angle pointing towards this spot but then it's having its width increase and it creates the illusion of moving away then underneath well above that you have this rainbow um, image with the source atop blend and as a result of that source atop blend the objects on its layer but below it basically the circle this semicircle and this squiggly line um, they all act as a mask and they show the image um, depending on their contours and shapes so that's the basics of how it's done if you look inside the uh, event sheet logic you may come across something some quite complicated maths if you're not familiar with trigonometry then it may appear as quite complicated because I use both the sign and the cos um, elements to get the positioning of this if you notice this uh, this uh, you can rotate tiled backgrounds and there's another effect with tiled backgrounds in that if I extend them they only repeat um, one way so if I were to extend this to the right you can see that new images are being created but if I extend this to the left the new images still are created on the right hand side so with this I couldn't have this positioned at the laser um, head and then extend away because otherwise you had to have a static image instead I had to have it rotated towards this position and then increase its width to create this wavy line effect before it was used as a mask with the, uh, the rainbow tiled effect if you understand what I'm talking about um, as a fact it was slightly complicated and on top of that the hotspot isn't in the center on the side it's on the corner so I had to use some other mathematical um, trigonometry uh, expressions to get that position you'll find if you look through the event sheet code that to get these positions I'm actually calling a function and I'm passing parameters which are laser position x and the height 
for example, and then these parameters are then sent to a function, and that function returns the value after working out the mathematical equation. In this case, it uses cos and sines and absolute values as well. Um, and that gets sent back. Now, when on this uh, in this layer, now when you press anywhere, you click on the mouse button, you'll find that the um, opacity of the objects changes so that you can be seen. On top of that, the angle of the head rotates towards where um, the screen is being touched, and a very variety of other things. But these can all, are all explained in the grouping um, descriptions. Anyway, that's a brief overview of that CAPEX. Like I say, it's available from my site for about £1.50, which is about the cost of a small coffee or something here in the UK. Um, because it takes a long time for me to create both the artwork and as well as create the comments and the annotations and program these, um, that's the reason why I'm putting a price on these rather than just releasing them for free. Whereas I have explained in other videos how to create the effect and they I will produce a free CAPEX file for those videos. Um, if you like this video please click like, uh, please visit my website englishacon.com, um, please visit my Facebook page as well and if you have any comments or queries please leave a message in the YouTube comment section below or send me an email. Thank you very much for watching this video.